Hey guys, are you ready? <laughs> oh, thank you, dragons. Okay, hold on, guys. Uh, yeah, so welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. So I noticed that many people sent their links in advance. So hold on, I have to figure out the order so I can review tracks in the correct order. <clears throat> I hope everyone is having a good Sunday. And I hope it's not too hot. Right now it's really nice, it's like 25 degrees. I can finally breathe. Okay, so the first track is going to be uh, by Patrick Herman. So, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Hold on, just let me check. Something. All right. Let's see Patrick's track. So I think he's not here right now because he couldn't make it. So that's why he sent it in advance. Okay, hold on guys. <clears throat> I just changed the description to make it more obvious that uh, the donation, I mean, the, the link should be added to the donation message. But anyway, I had a good listen to this track. This is very nice, uh, Patrick, you did a good job with this. I think what's bothering me kind of is, uh, first of all, the mids in the, in the intro here. The mids are just kind of a little bit too resonant. Let's find the frequency actually. Uh, well, let's find it after. And and the second thing would be the dynamics, and also the mids in that part are slightly too dominant. Like the percussion, any kind of bass uh, hits or whatever are a bit too recessed. Uh, so it does feel a little bit um, contained because of this lack of you know this overload of mids. Uh, it's not too bad, but it's 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 still a bit you know feels a bit sausaged. So let 
let me find the spot, it's not everywhere. Oh yeah, this. So, there is something that's holding this frequency all the time and it gets a bit jarring during the intro. It's not too much, it's like 2dB too much, but it does get a bit... And also here. Like 200 and 400. Like mostly around here. Yeah. Like when the sound is by itself and there is not enough stuff to kind of compensate for it, it's a bit poking and it feels a bit like too lonely. So the sound is very resonant here and it's a bit annoying. That's the only thing for the intro. I mean, the rest is really solid. I would say maybe you could be a bit more adventurous with panning. The panning is a little bit... I mean, the violins are already panned, but... If you could find a way to spread things a little more, also maybe a few percent uh, stereo enhancer in the master a bit more. But I would say mostly panning. Just with panning, I think you could do like a few percent more to make it a bit more... A bit more interesting. But actually this part feels very wide already. Yeah, I would say for this part it's mostly a frequency balance problem. Um, So what I'm missing is definitely that bass here. So if you have a tuba double bass, just make that more prominent. And the low booms as well, as I was talking about before. Oh, there is a bit of a resonance here also. So you kind of want to fix that in the mix, of course, not in the master, but yeah, slightly reduce uh, the 3k, probably violins or stuff like that. Then the mid-range is a bit too, you know, the mid-range is not supported by enough bass. So you want to support that mid-range with more bass. The highs are fine, I would say. And um, and that's that's fine. Maybe it's a bit too much. You wanna cut that harmonic here quite a lot. Or we'll just lower the volume of this sound overall actually. It will do the same thing, so just lower this sound. Because after the soft piano it's a bit... Yeah, that's about it. Otherwise it's really great. Okay. So... Hold on guys, I'm not getting the... Actually, that's a good point. Uh, I should let me check the dynamic range because I had to lower the. I didn't pay attention to that, but I had to lower the volume knob actually. Yeah, actually, you're, you're totally right. a bit too much, like maybe 3 dB too much. Yeah, that's completely right. Like you shouldn't have to really move the, volu the volume knob. Um, and it does feel really loud here and it's slightly too quiet here. I would say maybe 3 dB. Maybe 3 dB would uh, make it a bit... You know, even for, from the intro to this part, I would say. Um, that would make it a bit more easy to listen to. Oh my god, so many tracks. Hold on, guys. I'm gonna get in the right order. 
Um, so we got a Powell S afterwards. Uh, but he didn't include any link. Let me see, let me check my email. Hmm. Pavel, if you're in the chat, I'm trying to find your track. Or maybe, hold on, maybe it's someone. Maybe I know who it is. Okay, then I already downloaded the track in advance. I think it might be Simon Hanna. I'm not sure. But that's also a track that was sent to me in advance. All right. So then we got this track by Simon Hanna. Let's see. So the bass is too muddy, so you can already. <clears throat> can reduce that a lot. Try volume first and then shape it a bit. You have, uh, it seems that it's a bit inconsistent. Uh, the second staccato is too resonant. So you might want to use first lower the volume overall, the level of the bass, and second use dynamic EQ to address the jumpy notes. That way. And you want to lower it overall though. Something like that. Start with volume, I would say. This is definitely too muddy. But it's, it's getting better as we have more stuff, so try maybe to play with velocity because it's almost good here. But it's still too muddy here. So the low trombones here, the trombones sweep. It's too boxy. So try to cut some of the boxiness here, around 600. The bass is still too muddy. It's a great track. It's really nice, the writing on this. So the cello sounds like it's a bit muddy. I think maybe around 400. Uh, it's a bit hard to target this. Yeah, just the, I think the low cello. Just slightly around 400, you want to cut it like a, a couple of
It feels a bit cloudy. So it's the brass, the low brass is too much on 800, I would say. Evenly, it's 700. Okay, just there, the low trombones, the low whatever, everything's low brass. You just can want to cut more there, like a 3 dB or so. So the brass is a bit... A bit deeper, basically, just the brass though. That choir is a bit muddy. So you want to try to boost the air on the choir and cut the 1k? The percussion could be punchier here. Same critics for the choir and the brass. Like making the brass a bit more scooped is gonna make the violins more audible as well and less buried feeling. The whole mix will be a bit clearer. And cutting the choir mids as well. That's kind of that's an extreme, but that's kind of the range you want to notch in the choir and the brass. And maybe the percussion you have here could be punchier, so try to see if you can raise it. So right now it's just very light. Uh, doesn't have to be super, super like booming, but maybe you can make the percussion a bit punchier here during these loud parts. But yeah, otherwise it feels very nice, it feels very wide, you know? It's just these few issues, but it's pretty clean. It's cool. And the composition is just great on this. Um, okay, so next one, I think it's... Uh, I think that was Powell, hopefully. Hopefully Powell was you. That was this track I just showed, because Powell donated but didn't include a link. Um, and then there is uh, Volodia. <laughs> I love his message. Hello, Mr. Dolier. Feel free to put my head in the poo like we do with kitties to teach. I appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, sure thing, but I need to, I need to have your link. Um, yeah, if you can email me the link, it would be great. In the meantime, I will check uh, Gabriele Salomone's track. I have a WeTransfer link, so that's good. Please uh, include direct links, guys. So WeTransfer, Google Drive, or Dropbox, but direct links. So I can download without, you know adding it to my folder or something like that. Okay, so... Oh, it's a short one. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, great. I have to check behind me now.
So this is kind of surgical stuff, but during the first part of the choir, you might want to cut this like 2 dB. And when the other voices come in, it's a bit too harsh. At 4K exactly, so when only when the other voices come in. Cut 3 dB here. It feels a bit more far away because of the, um, that cut here. It's going to be feel nicer in the mix. So that's kind of something you can do with EQ automation. So then the problem is here is with the hits. They feel like the heights were cut off like an MP3. That's because you can see here it's, there is a peak and then there is a roll off. So what you can do to make this feel better is remove some of the 6K kind of scissor. So it feels more balanced basically. Otherwise it feels like it's rolled off because you have this frequency which is very prominent and afterwards you don't get anything so if you could use a different hit sample or maybe if, if there is like a distortion that's activated on this hit sample that could be the reason it's, uh, it sounds this way, the tone, it's not very nice. So maybe layer another high sample or just cut this to make that peak feel less like it's like from an amp or something. And at the same time, the hit is not punchy enough. It's kind of just like all highs and the lows don't really punch. The lows just are kind of there, but they're very flat. So you want to find a better low layer that has some punch to it in the bass. See, it's, it's very long, the sub is like, oof, but there is no really punch to it. If you have reverb on the bass of the hits, remove the reverb because it kind of sounds like there is reverb on the bass on the hits because you can hear the tail, the sub tail is very long. But maybe it's just the hit samples which are like that. But you definitely something you want something that has a better high end, so better turn in the high end, and something that punches more, especially at the end here, because it's just kind of clack clack clack. But you don't really feel much energy in the bass here. But yeah, I, I like the scary vibe though. Um. What? SGL, hey, what's up? Okay, guys. Um, da -da -da. Oh, actually, yeah, Powell just sent me his track. It was in Simon. Uh, okay, so I got Powell's track, now I can review it. Uh, I will do it n now, because you donated before. So... Um, got Powell's track, great. Thank you. I'm on it. Okay.
Okay, so the two main issues are going to be the flute, which is very narrow and mono. So because of this recording, you want to simulate uh, at least some stereo space to it before you put a hole on it. It still kind of lacks some hole reverb, so add more hole reverb. But before that, in, as an insert, you're going to want to add some room to it. So it feels more uh, like there is actually a decatry. It's like part of the orchestra and the other libraries. So you're going to be simulating a, a decatry kind of, or just like stereo pairs of mic with just a room ambience. So I use a, I use a stereo room. Right? Instantly it's wide. If you listen with headphones, you will instantly hear it. But it's still kind of dry, right? This reverb is very short. A short room is not going to add any tail. So after this, you want to add more hole reverb. So first you go through the room, then you go through the hole. And that's going to make your flute sound like it's part of the, the room, basically, and all the other libraries. Uh, so that's just on the flute, and um, actually that, that's little um, metallic instrument, gling, you can do the same treatment. Uh, but for the, the main part, the issue is a bit with the, the low end here. So there is an instrument, I don't know if it's the drums or the bass. I think it's the drums because it's it's on every hit, every single hit. It's too resonant. So you want to cut that peak here and get the drums a bit more even. So maybe you just cut that peak. So the drums feel a bit less resonant. Right now it feels a bit like it's in the bottle or something. The brass, <clears throat> the brass feels a bit too quiet. Like the violins are over dominating, but the brass could be a bit louder. Even the lead actually, but the brass here also. And the violins. The violins might be a little bit too hyped. So whatever high boost you have on the violins, maybe turn that down to dB on the strings and raise the brass overall. Yeah, that little plucked string instrument as well is too narrow, too mono, so you can do the same room trick on that. But don't do that with libraries which already sound stereo, you know? But the stuff that's very narrow, like this little thing or the flute, you can put that uh, room. Just any room reverb will do, as long as it's a small room. Like under maybe 600 millisecond tail or something like that. Yeah, it sounds pretty good, but I think if you can clean up the bass and do that, Especially the flute and the mono instruments, because that instantly feels fake when you have uh, something that's almost mono at the center like that. That's like an instant giveaway that it's not part of the same room, you know? Okay. Um... Okay, guys, so next.
we have a Volodya strike, which I think, I think it's going to be this one. Alright guys, I have to delete the track, uh, the tracks on my desktop, otherwise I'm mixing up. Um, I'm forgetting which ones I already checked, so let me de delete this quickly. Okay. I'm hearing some burgers and in this. It's quite unique. It's really unique. Okay, so this one is a bit tricky because because there are a few problems related to space, which I think you probably created, and by default there was not there because you have lots of instruments. It feels like they're mono, so you put some instruments in mono, uh, like some of the the trombones, Brahms, I feel, and the violins. And if you do that, it instantly makes the space fake. Um. So you definitely don't want to mess, to narrow the stereo field of trombones or whatever. I mean, unless you're using, you're using like really bad libraries, and unfortunately you don't have the choice and it's mono by default. Like mono, trombone, and cymbals, but I think that's very unlikely. So you probably messed with the stereo field and you probably don't want to do that because instantly you make the, the space fake that way. So you have to turn that off on all the stuff that you narrowed. Like the trombones here. And the violins. The violins feel very feel too much band and also feel narrow. Like you don't want to mess too much with the space of libraries that much. Because uh it's already recorded with a uh, stereo mics, you know, natural sound stage. So if you mess with that like that and you narrow it, even adding reverb after that or trying to recreate a stereo space is not gonna fix it, so it's pretty rare, the like cases where you actually need to narrow the stereo field and, uh, you know, change like the width a lot of libraries. It's very rare that you need to do that. Okay, hold on. Uh, so, that's like the fixing that would be important. Then the next thing you could do is put a room reverb to create a stereo space around this synth here, the, the syncopated synth. Because it feels very dry and mono. So if you did like I showed the previous track I showed the, on the flute, you can do the same thing. Uh, so you put, um, is patch? Okay. you put a room reverb. Ah! 
See, it gives a nice, a nice ambience to the synth. That could be nice. That, that voice is a bit dry, so what you could do... First put the room. And then put some whole reverb after that, so it doesn't feel like it's in a small room. And that way you would have like a really more ambient, lush sounding vocal with more stereo field as well. So you could do that. Because right now it feels a bit too mono and close. Say so yeah, that trombone needs to be fixed, uh, too mono. Same for that vocal here, that lead vocal. You probably want to add more stereo feel to it. The snare is a bit dry. Since it's kind of an orchestral track, I recommend uh, putting some maybe plate reverb just to give the snare a bit of a tail there. The kicks are a bit too quiet in volume. And the kicks are even less felt in the final part. And uh, the snare also feels a bit too small. So you want louder snare, louder kick, wetter snare. Um, the trombone is a bit jarring. So maybe reduce the trombone here. And the violins feel too much on the left and too mono on the left, so you want to pan less and not narrow it. Yeah, that's about it. So I think the biggest issues here is space, spatial issues. Uh, so you need to make this feel more realistic by not messing with the stereo field, keeping it stereo, not making it mono. And that's like the biggest thing for sure that you need to fix in this track. Okay. Um, so next track is going to be... It's going to be... Uh, Blues Folkman, okay. I don't need this track, I'm not sure which one it is, hold on. Um, Symbiosis, yeah, that's going to be Andres Rodriguez. Um, okay, so right now I have to check this one. So that by Blues Folkman. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, Arshan, that was your track. I think there is still uh, someone who donated and didn't include his link. Uh, Volodia, if you... Okay, he donated three hours ago, but he didn't... didn't include the link. Uh, Volodia, if you're here, or maybe if you're not here after the stream, feel free to send me the link. I will review it for you. Um, okay, so sample mix two. Um, probably going for two hours overall, and so yeah, there is still time. Um, you can donate until like, I'm probably going to accept donations for 40 more minutes or something like that. It depends how many tracks I get. I got, um, one, two, three, four, five more to check right now, so I feel free. Okay. It wasn't your track, yeah. I was, yeah uh, if you can email me at uh, joeldoyemixing at gmail.com, you can email me your track. Yeah, a bunch of people don't don notice in advance. Uh, flow, but uh, yeah, I see your track. It, there is one more track, and then it's your track. Okay.
the intro sounds good. Maybe just one frequency. I think it's like a pulse that is doing this. It's a bit too much. You want to nudge that a bit. Should maybe 3 dB. That's a bit too harsh. I'm gonna cut a bit here. Maybe cut 2 dB and also lower it in the volume. So here are the pack high end. I think it's a bit too much. It's kind of the same thing with the symbol, like it's just too much, you wanna kind of tame that. Maybe a combination of limiting. Because there are some peaks which are kind of bothering me. Combination of limiting and EQ, so you could start with something like that. On the perk by itself, of course. And then you could... Uh, then you could... It's a, of course it's a bit dirty because I'm doing it on everything, but that if you do like multiple limiting, so a pretty high ratio, look ahead, shortest attack, short release, hard knee, so it responds well to the jumps. If you use a soft knee, it's gonna compress everything kind of. If you use a hard knee, it's gonna target the stuff that's louder, more aggressively. So you're gonna use a hard knee, and uh, that way you can kind of, you know, compress these peaks. So that can help making it a bit nicer. And, more blended in the mix and making it more blended in the mix is going to help with the feeling of room as well. It's going to feel like it's more part of the room, so it's going to feel bigger as well. So yeah. Other than that, uh, let me listen. I mean, the low end is pretty nice, it's mostly the, the high end which is distracting. Yeah, same, the symbol as well here. Okay, I think the cello, the cello is a bit muddy. On there. So try to cut your cello a bit uh, here so the mix is going to be a bit clearer. That's also going to help in the intro. And it sounds around like 4500 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I guess that's it. The biggest problem is definitely the, the high end here, you want to tame it. Otherwise it's, uh, it's, you know, it's kind of taking power away from the track, because the track is focusing your ears too much on the high end. So the, that's for sure you want to get rid of that to some degree. 
All right. Um, okay, I got a follow the ass track. Awesome. Uh, I'm downloading right now. Yeah, no problem. Glad it helped. Okay, so the first thing would be the harp. Harp is too dry, so you want to add more reverb on that, because it doesn't feel like it's part of a hall right now. Same for the flute. I can't hear enough of the room, so add more hall reverb on that. So you have some string swells going on here, violin swells behind the vocals. And these violin swells have a bit more, a bit too much 3K. At least I think it's violin swells. Yeah, definitely. Like around there, it's a bit too nasty. So if you can make the violin more lush by cutting there, it's gonna help if you cut around there to, on the violins. I mean, same for the voice, to be honest. I sound like the voice has some... some frequencies there that you also want to cut. So try to cut a bit of high mids as well on the voice. The cello is a bit too resonant and out of control around 2 or 300. So try to use multiband compression or dynamic EQ to control these resonances. See how much variation there is? It 
yeah. see, certain certain notes are going to pop more and be more resonant, and it kind of makes the track muddy at times on certain notes at certain times. So you can even out the chiller like that. I think even the voice sounds too dry, everything sounds a bit too dry, so feel free to push the reverbs a bit. The percussion is a bit too, too quiet. And feel free to add more bass to the percussion. As well as volume, so it's a bit beefier. is a bit muddy here. I think it's the combination of... Uh... Is it an oboe? Sounds like an oboe or something. Oh, clarin. No, I think it's an oboe. Uh, the combination of that plus the piano makes the mid-range a bit muddy. So you probably want to tame the range a bit on the oboe and the, the piano to make the track clearer. Yeah, it sounds a bit too dry, like, it sounds a bit muddy, but too dry at the same time, so you want to push the reverbs. Be careful that if you push the reverbs, it's going to make the, the mid-range also muddier, so you might need to cut even more. It's not too muddy here, it's mostly muddy around the, the spot here, and the, the first half of the climax. Like, it's kind of resonating here, so that frequency. You want to cut a bit. There. So yeah. Oh, and to finish, the music box, the transients are a bit too harsh, so you get some kind of small tick sounds, which are a bit too loud. So if you limit, it's going to transparently make these tick sounds better to listen to. So. See that one? It's, it's kind of like less aggressive on the ears. It's kind of transparent at the same time, but less aggressive because we're shaving this off basically. If, if you put a limit on it. So it doesn't really change the sound that much, but it makes it more comfortable to listen to. So put take a limiter and don't be afraid. See, I'm doing like 12 dB of limiting here. So you really want to get these peaks kind of shaved off. Um, yeah. What's my favorite reverb on vocals? Probably the lexicon PCM plate or lexicon PCM random hall. Or I would just use my hall reverbs, which I use on the orchestra also sometimes. So that would be a combination of uh, VSS3 and Verbsuit Classics with the Breakasty expansion. So in, in parallel. But if it's like a song and I have a main vocal and I need to put a reverb on it, I would generally take the lexicon plate, PCM plate. Hmm. All right, then we got... Yeah, I think you need a bit more. Yeah, glad it helped. Um... What? Uh, that was the one I just checked. Okay, so now we got symbiosis. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. let me check. Um, actually, did I check some of this already?
I, I didn't check it yet. Hold on, guys, I'm trying to find the order. Okay, I, I think it's fine. I'm just gonna listen to this now then. Do -do -do -do. All right. I think this is I'm not sure by who this is. Sorry, guys, I'm getting mixed up. Uh. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Actually. Uh. Yeah. Flowpot, you said you need to go to sleep. So okay, guys, I'm just gonna review his track because he needs to go, and then I will do symbiosis. If that's okay. It's short too, so it should be shouldn't take too long. One minute. Okay. You said you're going, I mean, I guess you're going for mono sound. But if you want to go for that lofi sound, then make it even more lofi because it's too clean. So make it distorted as well or something, a bit crunchy. Because right now it's kind of clean and noisy, so you, you don't really get it. Like, you don't really get if it's lofi on purpose or if it's just mono somehow. So make it, make it crunchier or something, yeah. Probably the best remix I ever heard of this piece. So I would say the, the first thing would be the kick, it's a bit too flat. So you have to see if it's coming from the limiting you did or if it's coming from the kick itself. Somehow it feels like it's just not punching enough. So you want to see if you can make it a bit punch here in the base. It's just not round enough, basically. Make, make sure you put a substantial release on the side chain with the base. You can put like 200 milliseconds or something. Just make sure you get like a Boom, and the bass can come in a bit after, and it doesn't have to be right away. But like the in hip hop, the kick right needs to punch and be round, kind of like a football or something in terms of sound. Right now, it feels a bit squashed. That's all. So the snare, you have to see if you want to leave it dry, or since it's kind of a classical music remix, you could make the snare a bit wet. Or you could make the snare dry, but with a reverb with a pre-delay. So you could have a kind of a delay reverb, so like a like a dry snare, and then the reverb tail. Like, yeah. Let me see if I can quickly. Maybe. So like maybe a, a long pre-delay. Just just on the snare. So you get the proximity and then you get some tail, right? If you put a 
pretty long pre delay. That could be nice. Oops. Uh, just a suggestion. The piano strings. Okay, I was gonna talk about that. So let me see the piano and strings. It feels a bit too dry to me. I would put some kind of shimmery reverb on the piano just to make it a bit more spacious. You know, it would feel a bit more serious if it felt a bit more real. And you would have the contrast between like the dry kind of kick and bass, you know, and then the piano kind of soaring above with the reverb. And that would work because the piano is high, so it wouldn't get in the way and it wouldn't really create mud. Drums, like some kind of brass going on. It's a bit too muddy at like 500, so you wanna cut that a bit. Hmm, this sounds a bit out of phase. I think the bram, you might have a stereo enhancer on it as well. You can turn that down. I'm not really hearing the strings. Are they just in the background? And the strings are fine, you don't really need loud strings, I guess. Is it just stuff in the background? Oh, yeah, there maybe, yeah. hearing strings to be honest like maybe I'm yeah I, I'm, I'm not hearing the strings so maybe you want to turn them up but at the same time if they create mud you might just want to leave them where they are because I don't think I don't know if you need them like maybe keep it more minimal just have the piano and the and the, the beat you know and the bass because that's like the most important elements it's gonna feel more separated this way if you just leave that really shine if you make that really shine but yeah it's fun it's fun sounding uh i think that's a chopin etude right it's opus 11 something it is i think it's chopin I think I tried to learn this a few years ago, but I couldn't because it's too difficult. But I learned Opus 10, number one instead. Okay, yeah, it's 2511, true. Yeah, 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 I, it, I like this one. Okay, so... Nah, I mean, I could play the first run, then I gave up. The first run is fine, you just get it in your muscle mem memory and you can do it. All right, so Symbiosis, I forgot by who it is. Good night. <laughs> uh, I think it's by uh, Andres Rodriguez. Okay, I think that's you. Let's listen to this.
Yeah, the stereo image feels a bit too smeared, so you probably have too much stereo enhancer on this. So you want to back that off a bit. Like, I, I'm kind of feeling like it's coming from everywhere, like it's too wide. So that's, that's what I, it sounds like. Hold on, guys. Uh, so yeah, if you have any stereo enhancer, maybe turn it down. And the next problem is the mid-range. Oh, you heard the review, Patrick? Uh, and the frame is the mid-range, then it feels like the mid-range is kind of drowning the other elements. It's a bit too resonant, so let's see what the frequencies are. It's kind of fine here. And there is nothing much here. But there's like a pad in the background here. It's a bit too... If you can cut that pad here around 1k. Not the piano. Just the pad. The hits are fine. A bit resin, like a bit boomy, but it's fine. Because there is space for it, so. See, that feels a bit too wide as well, like too, too stereo enhanced, slightly. And then the, the brass, the brass is definitely muddying this up. Check the trombones uh, first. Cut the trombones first and the low brass first uh, around 1k. Around there. And then also cut the horns around the fundamental a bit. like a pad in the background still during this yeah still the same pad the same pad is way too too muddy and it's not helping that there is brass on top so the brass is further muddying this pad but you definitely want to kill the um, bit range on this pad here Hits feel the hits feel too small. They don't feel punchy enough because there is all the mid range that's kind of loud in comparison. So they're not very, they're not really kind of punching. <laughs> you just want more hits. Like try first to raise the volume a bit and then maybe boost some bass and see if you don't have too much subtail overlapping because if you're using the same hits i feel like the subtail is a bit too long so the subs of the hits are probably overlapping way too much so you might want to reconsider what low layer you're using especially because dun, dun, dun. if the subtail is very long you're just gonna create a constant rumble and i'm kind of kind of hearing some of that so like if the hits are just isolated it's fine to have a long boomy rumble but if you start to make them drive a bit they need to be tighter in the trench too much It's the same problem throughout the track. The mid-range is too much, the hits are too drowned in the mid-range. 
So yeah. But other than that, yeah, it's really cool. I think you just need to clear up that mid range because it's just it sounds like noise otherwise. But if you can clear up that, that mid range, then you will hear more of the tone of the individual instruments, you will hear the hits more and everything will be clearer and nicer. Oh hey. Thanks for being here. All right, so yeah, that's it for this track. Um, okay, then we have this. Um, By the way, if, if someone, I hope I'm not forgetting anyone, it's just a bit complicated because I have to jump between my email and my donation list and stuff, but okay, I think that's the next one. Hold on, guys. I'm going to mute my phone. Okay, so this is a track by, I think Dragons, is it your track? Yeah, Dragons, okay. Let's check your track. It sounds interesting so far. Okay, so yeah, make the Oceania phrases more random. That's, that's a good idea. But mix wise, I would say mix wise, you need to clear up the Oceania because it's a bit too muddy. And by default, the library is shift muddy, so you have to clear it up. That's the issue with this library. It's not really an issue, but you need to know that you need to cut the mids quite a lot on this library, otherwise it sounds very muddy. So it's gonna be around 500 to 1k. Yeah, around there. So you want to cut there like maybe 3 dB or something and maybe boost more highs. See if you just, just do that, it already feels nice on, right? So that's what you could do in the choir to make it clearer. And uh, also, yeah, I think the, the, the choir is a bit on, too much on the front. But what you could do to make it blend more is to raise the percussion. I would actually kind of want louder percussion on this. See, it's kind of discreet. I mean, it's kind of a hard 
you know battle whatever track so you need like some you know some rhythm to it it can be quite a percussive track i think so you got like the two main things could be the choir and the percussion so i would definitely boost the percussion just to make us focus a bit less 100 percent on the choir and uh to add more interest you know to add like two kind of elements that kind of talk to each other if that makes sense Right now, I think the percussion is a bit more, in, a bit too much in the background. But you have interesting things like uh, anvil hits or whatever, all this nice stuff. You could make it a bit more audible. Like the rhythm is pretty, pretty intricate, so you could highlight that. Maybe that uh, trombone is a bit dry. It kind of feels a bit small. Maybe check the reverb on this. Maybe add more reverb. Yeah, the percussion. Maybe you know a few, a couple more dB or something. Just. Speaking of the percussion, I think maybe it's a bit muddy here. Yeah, there you go, around 300. It's instantly clean also whatever rhythm is resonating here you want to cut it down i think it's like takeos it's definitely takeos yeah the takeos Yeah, like basically clearing the rumble slightly in like the 300 range will make the track more clear and just everything will come through a bit cleanly, more cleanly. And maybe the choir is a bit too dry, like it kind of feels wet because there is so much mid-range, but if you nudge the mid-range first... And then you add more reverb. It could make the highs and everything a bit more, you know, bigger sounding. So maybe add a bit more reverb and but clear up the mids first. So yeah. Yeah, it's a really fun track though. So, I mean, other than that, the percussion mix is pretty good, to be honest. It's just that taiko that is a bit too muddy, and maybe something else in that part which is a bit muddy. But other than that, the percussion sounds good, to be honest. Well, glad it helped. All right, guys, um, let's see what's next. We got, we got, we got heist one. Oh, heist one, you deleted it. Um, uh, from Film and Back Studios, did you send uh, another track which you deleted? A SoundCloud link. It's not loading. For now, for now, let me go to Mathieu Duguay's track. Let's see.
to hear the pad. The pad which is resonating here. It's a bit too much. And also here, so maybe it's a volume issue. Maybe cut the pad a bit here and lower it. Like the main low mid pad. Yeah, 300 hertz, you can hear it. Sub boom is a bit loud. Uh, that high grinning thing, you can put more reverb on it. Same here, the bass is too muddy. Check whatever's resonating there and cut it. Maybe, maybe dynamic EQ it as well. A bit too much sub here. Still kind of muddy in the limit. I think it's the same pad, probably. It's probably the same pad. There is a, an annoying resonance here. Maybe a cello or something. It's just very cloudy. And the high tambourine shaker thing, you can put more reverb on it. Uh, maybe not whole reverb, just whole reverb, but some room to give it some stereo space. The hole might be too shimmery, but the room ambience, just a short room, might create the necessary space to make the shaker feel not as small and, you know, close mic'd. Also, turn it down a bit in volume. And yeah, just clear these limits everywhere. Check what's resonating there. Two and three hundred. But yeah. And that final sound, I think maybe it's a gong or something. It's too much at like 3k. Sorry, 2.4. 2.5k. Yeah, other than that, it's just like mud clearing you need to do here. It's cool though. Um, just a bit of mud clearing. Yeah. And the percussion maybe could be a bit louder, but I think once you clear the mud, the percussion will already feel louder because you will have more space for it. You're welcome. Um, so then. We got uh, we got Paul Cassidy. All right. Uh, apparently, yeah. Download like this. All righty. Let's listen to it.
Damn. That's nice. It's an Assassin's Creed 2 Rescore, apparently. But like, if that's VSTs, it sounds very realistic. It sounds very realistic. Let's see. You did a good job with the programming on this, yeah. It's really amazing. I mean, it's VSTs, obviously, but yeah. Like the woodwinds and stuff. See, sometimes I'm kind of asking myself, like, some of the stuff doesn't sound like VSTs. I mean, it still always does a bit, but you know, like the, the dynamic runs on the on the trumpets here, you made the velocity increase. All that detail is really well done. Anyway, let, let's uh, focus on the mix. Oh yeah, uh, dynamics. Uh, that's a bit too quiet compared to this. That's fine. But I feel like the beginning is a bit too quiet. A bit too quiet. Okay, so... The brass is a bit too muddy. Just a little bit there. Just on the brass. So the problem is these wood with woodwind runs are too aggressive. So you wanna reduce them in volume. I think it's the piccolo, right? These harmonics here are too much, so it's probably too loud in volume. So just lower that instead of EQing and see how it behaves just with less volume. That's too much. But this one on the right, this little run on the right is fine. But like the, I think that's xylophone, right? Yeah, probably. Um, but the, um, the piccolo is not balanced, so you want to kind of create some balance between the runs, right, left and right and stuff. So, yeah. Like even I don't know if in real life a piccolo would be that loud. I think piccolos are piccolos are just obscenely loud, but doesn't matter. Like as a, in the mix itself, you want it quiet. So, yeah. Same here, that little note here, that little trill. That, that might be a Nikyu thing. Yeah. You might want to go as well, go into it and EQ, but start with the volume first and see if you still have some sibilant uh, things. A bit muddy on the horns here. Yeah. Slightly, should it be? The choir has too much of the formant frequency, which is around 3k. So you want to cut that thing. Not too much, because if you cut too much here, it becomes too soft and doesn't scream as loud. But when it's just too loud, it hurts the ear, so you, you need to balance this, it's important. It's easy to nuke it too much, but you don't want to go too far. You want to go like, like 3dB also. I 
sounds like the low mids are slightly too recessed, like anything between 100 and 400, and then we got the haunts above, right? But between that, it kind of feeling like it's a bit empty, so maybe... I try to maybe to distort the timpani or add more beefiness. Because like the timpani is strong here. But like if you could have, if you could feel that range somehow, like maybe more warmer, a bit more warmer tuba. I'm not talking about 500, but what's below 500 basically, like below the horn fundamental. So you can kind of somehow fill that up. So maybe saturate, saturate the um, timpani a bit, maybe boost uh, tuba or something like that, or like the low instruments, contrabassoon or whatever, if you have that, just to fill that range a bit. Because right now it feels like we have the resonance of the timpani, right, at like 90 hertz, and then kind of a hole, and then the horns again. See if you can add a tiny bit more reverb. So that's kind of a matter of taste, but you could add, uh, you could add a tiny bit more reverb to make this a bit bigger, especially like, like the woodwinds do feel a little bit close. You don't really have to, but you could. Uh, like if you want to make it sound like Air Studios, you can add more reverb. A piccolo again, too loud here. And, yeah. By the way, did you? Like, did you compose this, or is this like, I saw it's like an Assassin's Creed cover, but did you, did you like orchestrate this, or was it like that and you remade it, because it, it's really well done. And so that legato choir is a bit too wide, it feels like it's overly stereo enhanced or something. It's your own composition, I thought it was a, I thought this was a cover. Whoa, that's really impressive. If it's your own composition, then I'm really impressed with this. It's crazy good. The the that middle part is crazy complicated. Um, the um, the choir here is a bit too wide, so you want to turn turn that back. So if you create, if you make stuff that's too wide, like too star enhanced, it loses depth and it becomes two D, and it's like it comes closer. So it's not actually making it bigger, but smaller in a way. So you want to... Sounds out of phase. That really sounds out of phase. So you want to, yeah, remove any steering enhancer. Actually, you, you can kind of fix that just by narrowing the stereo field. So, like that. See what I'm talking about? Look, look. I mean, like the, the percussion and stuff makes it look more in the one, but if you just take a choir part... Right. But yeah, so that's something to fix. It's easier to hear headphones uh, than speakers. It's more harder to hear these phasing problems. But if you use headphones, the phasing problems become super apparent because it's more separated between the ears, so you feel the problem between the ears, like in the brain, much clearer. But yeah. Whoa, that's what, that was crazy. That was a crazy piece. Uh, congrats. So, next track, we got... We have sounds by the track is called Hestia. Waves are gonna know this. Waves unite. And good luck with the, the fixes on this track.
Sounds nice. Just curious, did, did you name it Hestia? Did you name it Hestia because of the the anime or not? Hi Jonathan. Yes. Mixer baguette. Oh, it's another game called Hestia. Okay, I thought it was a character in, in an anime. It was kind of funny because it's a funny character. Whatever. Never mind. Never mind then. Um yeah, so I think with this track. I'm having some space problems, some mid-range problems. Uh, let's go from the beginning again. So, you got some sub here. And you don't need it, so you have to see from where it's coming, because it's just rumble. So it could be coming from the piano, could be coming from the strings. Just take it and put a filter on it to get rid of it. See, you can kind of hear it. It's there. Oh yeah, it's probably the depths. Then. Okay. And the piano is slightly too resonant around here. So you're gonna cut a bit. To make the piano more balanced. And then it's a bit clipping here, so the low boom is too loud and it's clipping. They're gonna turn down the low boom. Like it's not hard clipping, but it's clipping against your limiter or whatever, so it's, it's creating some crunchiness. And either way, it's too loud. Even that, it's just too loud. It should be more subtle. The strings feel a bit dry, maybe turn up the reverb like 20% or something on the strings. Especially because it's a slow track, you can make it quite wet, so maybe 10% or 15% more, more reverb on the strings. And the piano is still a bit too resonant everywhere. It's really there. So you can tame that down. Somehow the chili feel a bit narrow. Like check what panning you used. If you used uh if you used like the panning in FL Studio or something, don't do it. Make sure you use balanced panning at least. Basically it's going to feel more natural. If you use true stereo panning, it's gonna kind of narrow the sound when you pan. It kind of feels a bit narrow. See if you can pan maybe a bit less or make sure it's balanced so basically just changing the levels between the left and the right purely just that and it might feel better and blend better the chili a bit too resonant at 200 so you cut you can cut that and use dynamic eq or multiband compression The oboe is a bit too mono and dry. It really doesn't feel part of the space, so you can add a room reverb on it to create some stereo width and field around it, and then you can put a hole after. So if you just if you just pay attention to the oboe, the way it feels if you add a room on it.
Oops, you can you see the if I bypass it here? Off on It less direct, right? So you wanna create some immediate kind of early reflections depth first, and then you put a hole on it so it feels more like it's in the same room with the chili. Again, the strings feel a bit muddy here. So you, you want to keep that cut going on for the, the low strings. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's about it. Nice track. <laughs> Glad it helps. All right, so... Let's see what's next. Okay, so I think that that's going to be the last one, the last review. Um, Vitrex, we got Vitrex next. And that's the last one for now. I think I'm going to close the donations now because there is no track left and it's already almost two hours. So I will just edit quickly the video. Remove the link. Okay. No, I'm sure it's not that bad. Don't say it's bad. Hold on. Okay, let's listen to it. Okay, so it's not that bad. I don't know why you said it's bad. Uh, no, no, your track is fine. It's just uh, there's a few, of course, composition things. Like in terms of realism, it feels a bit midi. It feels a bit too linear. Uh, the strings feel a bit robotic. But uh, about the mixing, I think there is some level issues, first of all. Like it's too focused on the violin, the lead violin. 
and uh, lots of the stuff just comes behind and it feels a bit unbalanced because of that so see the, you're lacking some low strings like i can't really hear much character from like the low strings so you definitely want to turn up the low strings um I think the high boost on the violin are slightly too much. Uh, it's a bit synthy sounding, a bit fake sounding, because there's a bit too much high boost on the violin, so on the strings in general. So you want to kind of turn down the boost, the high boost you did on the strings there. It's a bit too much. Uh, and the cymbals are a bit harsh. You have a peak here going on with the cymbals, so you can EQ them down. They will feel more realistic instantly. So you're gonna cut that on the symbols. Yes, yeah, you can see the violin here. The high end is too airy, it's too fake. So you wanna remove that boost or just tame it down a lot. You, you can have bright strings, but not to the point where it's synthy like that. The horn is too quiet, it's it's doing the lead here, but it's covered by the strings, the sustained strings, so you wanna boost the horns. It's supposed to lead. Same here. Hey, you got that violin? <laughs> Great, I can't sing. Uh, the violin doing like... Dum. I mean, hi, I can't sing the octave, but you know what I mean. Uh, but, and you got the horn behind it, which is too quiet. And the violin is supposed to be a backup thing here. It's the horn that's leading. So it doesn't make sense to have the horn quieter than this violin high lead. It's not a lead. The violin is just doing backup here. And it's just covering the theme. Same here, the low strings are too weak. Like. You want to feel like boom, 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 boom. You want like a solid cello bass thing going on. Like everywhere, the violins are just taking over the Chilean bass. I thought the chili feel a bit centered. The violins are fine, they feel a bit on the left, but you could pan slightly more the chili. On the right, I feel just a bit more. The 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 choir the vocals uh, feel a bit too much on the right somehow. Uh, they should be more centered. But just overall, it's a bit cloudy feeling. The frequency is white. It's like your strings are just kind of dominating too much from like 500 to 1k. So you kind of want to get more of that going on for the strings. I think the, the choir is also not helping, so you might need to cut the choir a bit here as well. Not too much, but just a bit to make the track a bit more flat sounding in terms of frequencies. And right now it's a bit too much like a bell curve in terms of the frequency response. Like, not enough, not enough lows, uh, too much of that muddy mid range, you know. And regarding the... So it's either on the vocals or the violins, you have a resonance around here. So you're gonna cut that. There. So try to figure out what is causing this and cut it. Yeah, 
Yeah, just overall feels too mid rangey. Yeah, that could be arrangement things as well. Like for example, too much unison in the leads, like layering too much stuff in unison just can create too much mid range. Uh, maybe you, I don't know if you have enough bass instruments. Uh, you know, the harmony can help if you have more lines in the bass and you just spread the, the, basically the arrangement better. It can also help the frequency response in the end. So you have to see if you can do something to kind of uncloud the mid range, make sure you don't have too much stuff layered on top. Just doing that lead or, you know, that range of frequencies. If you can maybe put some, spread some instruments in different places, like the low instruments lower and the high instruments higher. Actually, I don't know about higher, but so uh, maybe put some low instruments lower. That might help clear the mids, basically. That could be something to watch out for. But yeah, cool track. All right, guys. Um, let me just make sure there is no last minute donation. No, I think that's all. Well, I think that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream and uh, yeah, I will do the next one probably next month, uh, second Sunday of next month. Uh, usually it's the second Sunday. This one, it w this time it was the third Sunday because I was gone. But usually it's going to be the second Sunday of uh, every month. So yeah. I uh, hope you enjoyed guys and uh, yeah. See you next time then.